and welcome to the Divided State of America. I'm Heather Gardner, and we're going to be doing something a little bit different this week. We're going to focus entirely on one issue. Shots, baby! Ha <laughs> ha! Wrong kind of shots. Oh, God <laughs> Okay. Sorry about that. Someone suggested I need to be sober during this show, so let's back up a little bit. This week, we're going to be focusing on something that's been in short supply this past year. I'm not talking about hugs, bar hopping, or hope. We're about to get a lot more of that because... So the U.S. hit a daily record for coronavirus vaccinations. The U.S. administered over 100 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines. All states, tribes, and territories to make all adults, people 18 and over, eligible to be vaccinated no later than May 1. It's amazing what can happen when the country is run by competent professionals instead of a game show host that whines about ratings and cares more about golfing than governing. We have multiple safe and highly effective vaccines developed in record time going into arms by the millions every single day. There is even talk that we could be mostly back to normal by summer. Even the outlook on the economy has doubled since December. This is music to all of our ears. And it isn't even theoretical. There's a real life test case happening on the other side of the globe right now. The latest bit of good news is out of Israel, where data show the Pfizer-BioNTech shot is 94% effective in preventing asymptomatic infection. Shopping malls and leisure facilities, among other businesses, have restarted. The government is crediting its rapid vaccine rollout. After five months, West Jerusalem's YMCA gym is open again. Look at that! Normal life! Restaurants, bars, gyms, even concerts that don't come with the risk of death! Tell me what it's like. <sighs> We are on our way. But there's one giant obstacle. The millions of people between 20 and 40% of the population who won't get or are hesitant to get the vaccine. This is kind of a big deal because experts estimate that we can't really end this pandemic until 80 to 90% of our population is vaccinated. So who are these vaccine hesitant people and why don't they want that life-saving prick? Well, let's start with people of color. About 25% of Black Americans and 37% of Latino Americans don't want the vaccine, despite being disproportionately more likely to get COVID than white Americans. Their hesitancy is deep-rooted in a general mistrust of the medical community. You know, there's a long history of um, eth unethical and biased uh, treatment of Black people and people of color within the medical and the public health system. And tack on that the COVID vaccine is a new treatment well, many black Americans point to the Tuskegee study of untreated syphilis in the Negro male, a horrific human experiment where the Public Health Service and the CDC, the supposed good guys, lied to more than 600 black men over 40 years. A panel who reviewed that study found hundreds of impoverished blacks were misled, not given adequate treatment or penicillin for the disease. The ripple fact exists today. Yeah, they do. And for good fucking reason. But Americans across the board are wary of taking such a new drug. The number one reason people don't want to get the vaccine, 45%, is the fear of side effects. And the number two reason, 40%, is waiting to see if it's safe. And I get it. These are valid concerns, which is why the White House is launching a $250 million campaign to boost vaccine confidence. Will it work? <laughs> I damn sure hope so. But now let's talk about the other major reason people are experiencing vaccine hesitancy. Like nearly everything else in these divided states, it's politics. Anti-vaccination propaganda is partisan in nature. Nearly half of Trump voters do not plan to get the vaccine, compared to just 10 percent of Biden voters. Among Americans who are not yet vaccinated, there is a more than two to one disparity between Democrats and Republicans in terms of who's planning on getting the vaccine. Whew. OK, Biden has sure got his work cut out for him. But it's not just Republican voters. There's a growing list of GOP lawmakers also refusing the shot, including Senators Rand Paul and racist Ron Johnson. Although, to be fair, these two are much better at being pricks than taking pricks. Fortunately, other more responsible leaders have joined forces to encourage people to get their shots. This vaccine means hope. Suffered enough damage. In order to get rid of this pandemic, it's important for our fellow citizens to get vaccinated. Okay, hold the phone here just one second. How the 
hell did W get so jacked during a year when the average American gained 29 pounds? There's a reason I'm wearing this oversized blazer here. I always knew he was pro-guns, but damn. Okay. Did you notice who was missing from that ad, though? I'll give you a hint. It's the same guy claiming that without him, we wouldn't be getting these beautiful shots for five years. He wants all the credit for developing the vaccine. Okay. But did diddly squat to convince the American people they actually need to take it? Donald Trump and former First Lady Melania Trump quietly received the COVID-19 vaccine at the White House in January. What the fuck is that? Breaking news, two months later, they secretly got the shot together while Trump was still president? And Donald was finally in the same room as Melania while she was being penetrated. I did not see that coming. This asshat literally got people to drink bleach and bragged about taking hydroxychloroquine, which was proven ineffective as a COVID treatment, but God forbid. He set a powerful example for his supporters for the actual life-saving medicine. <laughs> Lord, maybe I do need a shot. Where's my tequila? <sighs> Trump promoting the vaccine in the months leading up to the rollout while he was still the fucking president could have made a huge difference in America's confidence in getting the shots, especially among Republicans. Instead, I think it's about right, it took until this week for us to get a tepid vaccine endorsement buried within a 10 minute Biden bashing Fox News ramble session. Thanks for nothing, Donnie. I would recommend it, and I would recommend it to a lot of people that don't want to get it. This thing was full when we started. Uh, too little, too late. A lot of minds have already been made up. And <laughs> don't get me started on right-wing media. These are not technically vaccines, right? The first ones are they're, they're, they're experimental gene therapies. How necessary is it to take the vaccine? Tucker Carlson, the only person in America who spreads white supremacy as efficiently as the Donald spread the virus. So what do we do now? How do we reach these people? Well, turns out education just might be the best vaccination to politicization. Longtime pollster Frank Luntz gathered a focus group of Trump voters who are vaccine hesitant to find out why and how they could be persuaded to change their minds. The answer was pretty simple. We want to be educated, not indoctrinated. And after being presented with five simple facts about the vaccine by a former CDC director, we'll just watch. How many of you would say that those five facts are impactful to you? Raise your hands if they're impactful. Impactful. Yeah. Wow. Wow, that's a lot I mean, of you. Well, would you look at that? In our world of fractured media, online disinformation, and polarization, all it took was the damn facts. While hesitancy is on the decline, we have still got a long way to go. So if you have someone in your life who's resisting the vaccine, don't shame them, educate them. And don't hesitate to share that vaccine selfie, not to gloat, but to show that it's safe and you are protecting the people around you. We are so, so close to getting our lives back. So when it's your turn, please get vaccinated and encourage those around you to do the same. Because listen, it is a simple fact of life. Beer bongs are much better at Coachella than they are at Couchella. Never encouraged Americans to get vaccinated. Trump promoted the shots, not whine about getting credit. Like when he got his prick, no mention he was getting it. Please take this remedy, make COVID a memory. And when it's time, get vaccinated. Please don't decline. Get your shot and we can get Concerts and sports events, the summer could be so nice. Please just get your vaccine, we're so close to our dream. Put an end to this quarantine, really want an indoor time. Thank you, Quad. Definitely no surprise, anti-vax are spreading lies. Damn it, why? The administration would like you to take this vaccine. Joe Biden told you last week, if you don't, you can't celebrate the 4th of July. With so much hesitation, we'll never get out of this mess. Screwing the nation, of course, is the Republicans. Voters all said Biden, now thank God we've got Biden. And now, incidentally, the cases have declined. Vaccines a miracle from science. Miracle. Need everyone's compliance. A shot or two will suffice. Please just get your vaccine. We're so close to our dream. Put an end to this.
this quarantine. Guarantee that you'll be fine. These are safe and effective products. All right, now that we've covered the partisan divide on vaccine hesitancy, there's another huge obstacle in our fight for immunity that may be even harder to overcome, religion. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and get this out of the way. Not all religious communities fall into the category we're about to discuss. There are plenty of churches and faith leaders actively working to promote the vaccine and even help with distribution. But there's one religious group in particular that's sticking out. Only 54% of white evangelicals plan on getting vaccinated. That's the lowest among all religious communities, and it's not particularly close. So let's chat real quick about why nearly half of white evangelicals don't want the vaccine and what's feeding their distrust. I'm gonna be blunt here, this doesn't really surprise me. Recent studies have shown that the leading predictor of ignoring precautions like mask wearing, avoiding indoor gatherings, and social distancing is Christian nationalism, something most prevalent in evangelical denominations. And also, highly religious states disobeyed stay-at-home orders more than other states. I mean, from the very beginning of this pandemic, we kinda saw a trend in which group wasn't the most receptive to public health safety measures. More than 650 coronavirus cases have been linked to nearly 40 churches and religious events across the country. They want to throw God's wonderful breathing system out the door. Zappa, you need to leave. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. No, Zappa, Sorry. not this idol. You are a demon. Don't worry, I'm sure if someone just calmly explained to that woman that vaccines aren't a tool of the devil, she'll come around, right? But truthfully, I'm having a hard time just outright blaming these people because messages of defiance were reinforced almost from day one. From the tippy top of our leadership right down to many local pastors, the pandemic became a religious freedom issue. Some governors have deemed liquor stores and abortion clinics as essential but have left out churches and other houses of worship. It's not right. The governor's order states churches are essential. They're trying to take down our great nation by shutting the doors to the church, but we will not let them. Or they're just trying to make sure your church members don't meet Jesus a little too soon, but sure, go with war on religion. Uh, is this guy auditioning for Fox and Friends? Or maybe he needs the flock to keep filling the collection plates. Mega churches ain't cheap. A year later, that same defiance and government skepticism has carried over into the vaccine rollout. Except now, just throw in conspiracy theories. Add all that up, it comes up and it equates to 666. But there will be segments of population that will not be able to buy nor sell unless they take up that mark in their forehead. I wouldn't take it because it's got aborted fetal tissue in it. And change your DNA with a vaccine. Microchips, aborted fetuses, changing your DNA, mark of the beast, spontaneous combustion, or whatever the fuck that last one was. I'd love to tell you that I had to work real hard to find my way down the COVID vaccine rabbit hole to hell, but this batshit nonsense is all over the internet. Y'all, religion TikTok is a scary place. And unfortunately, churchgoers are sharing conspiracy theories more frequently than they're sharing the gospel, it seems. In a recent survey, half of Protestant pastors said they hear conspiracy theories within their own congregations. And some pastors haven't helped the situation by perpetuating one of the biggest Christian theories, the mark of the beast, a biblical end of time scenario that's apparently being delivered by the government on behalf of the devil. The control, right. the restrictions right. that are being put in place, you can certainly see where this is a precursor mm. for what is about to happen. Now, some wonder if this uh, COVID-19 vaccination program that is coming could possibly be the mark of the beast. Um, short answer, no, I don't think so. But it is interesting. The mark of the beast. Is it a chip? A vaccine? Maybe a number, like 666. Y'all, it is one thing to hear nonsense on TikTok, but it is something else entirely when you hear it from your own personal spiritual leader or a spiritual celebrity. Thank you, Kanye. So what in God's name can we do? Because again, we kind of need like everyone to take the vaccine. 
Well, thankfully, a lot of faith leaders are stepping up to combat all this misinformation. And these are the voices we need to help amplify. God is not going to trick you that if you choose for your family to get a vaccine, you gave your family medicine, have fun in hell. That is not what he's doing because God, again, is a very loving, loving God. If you believe that God gives us the opportunity to act as his agents to try to relieve suffering and death, then it seems like this is a pretty good balance. The fact it has nothing to do with 666 and the fact it's not given in these two locations would be signs that this really is not the mark of the beast. Okay, actually that one kind of makes a little bit of sense to me. If they were telling me that I had to stick a giant needle into my forehead, I'd be out on the vaccine too. Foreheads and needles are never a good combination unless it's Botox. Another great way to promote vaccine trust is to make houses of worship vaccination centers. Many local governments have been partnering with faith leaders to bring mobile vaccine clinics to the congregation, boosting both trust and access. It's efforts to get more people inoculated, including using churches to distribute those shots. 500 doses were administered at St. Matthew Baptist Church in Jacksonville's Moncrief neighborhood. Transforming places of worship into places of protection for more people amid this pandemic. But if we want to make some real changes within this community, I think we have to go straight to the source. So please welcome to the show, historically inaccurate white Jesus via Zoom, obviously still a pandemic. Jesus! Oh, thank you so much for making time for us. Thank you. Oh, I, I think you're muted, Jesus. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Fix the button. Oh, oh. How about now? Yeah, hey, there we go. There we go. Got it. Me on a cracker, even after a year, I still can't figure this Zoom thing out. Yeah. At least I'm not as bad as my dad, though. The Old Testament guys are terrible with technology, Heather. I can only imagine. All right, listen, followers of you down here on Earth in America are kind of fucking up this pandemic for the rest of us here, so what's the deal? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Those aren't my followers. My followers love their neighbor. Those are political Christians, or uh, polychristians as I like to call them, and they follow politicians instead of me. And you know what? That's fine. It's fine. I'm, I'm fine. Yeah, poly Christians. That's a really good well, point. Well, doing to Very others is all I'm asking. It's, it's pretty simple, but, but I'm fine. I'm fine. Clearly, very fine. You know, you make a good point, though. I do feel like love your neighbor is really easy. If you loved them, then you'd wear a mask, you'd get the vaccine. This isn't really that hard. Yes, it's so easy. They're not being asked to walk on water. Just cover your nose and mouth. It's not that hard. Your Islamic sisters from another mister have been doing this forever, every day. And look, Heather, this COVID thing, it multiplies like loaves and fishes. And I can't Lazarus everybody's grandma. So please help each other out wear a mask and get vaccinated. You are just one being in the sky. I mean, I, I feel you there. Uh, but let's talk about uh, followers of you who also happen to be followers of our previous president, Donald Trump. Um, they're hesitant to get the vaccine too. Well, they have to look at it like this. Once everyone gets vaccinated, everyone gets their freedom back. So think of it as getting injected with freedom juice. I I'm sorry for the clumsy analogy, Heather. It's just that they respond better to the Patriot thing than the Jesus thing. Again, I'm fine. It's okay. Listen, I get it. And while I got you here, I, I do want to ask one quick question about you and Donald Trump, because he said this time last year that it was going to disappear like a miracle. And I feel like that's very much up your alley. So why couldn't you guys make that deal? I feel like it would have been a lot easier that way. Look, the only miracle is that he got elected. The guy never calls me, and really, Heather, it's not his fault. Gabriel over here put an extra dose of ego into the guy, oh. you know, as a joke. And <laughs> I can't believe anybody took him seriously. Even I didn't see that coming. It's very disappointing. Yeah, but funny joke. Don <laughs> Jr., his son, my God, that guy calls all the... No, it's just a figure of speech. That dude is always listening. <laughs> but my God, Don Jr. calls all the time and it's always four in the morning he's always bawling his eyes out and he's always really worked up you know what i mean ah uh, yeah okay one more question before we let you go after this pandemic ends america's got like a lot of issues here that we need to work on do you think you could help us get like a living wage passed that should be easy. I told rich people, it's going to be hard as hell to get into heaven. You need to give to the poor. Like I put it in red letters in the Bible. And you know, Heather, when I was down on earth, the people that pissed me off the most were the money changers. I cannot stand those people. 
Preach, Jesus, preach. All right, thank you so much for stopping by. I'll, I'll let you go. I know you're super busy. No problem, Heather. And you know what? This is my last Zoom of the day, so oh. uh, you know what that means. It's one o'clock, baby. Uh, I see what you did there. All right, Jesus, you know, Heather, thank you. You can call me anytime. It doesn't always have to be about business, you know? We can just sure. chat. We can chat about you, your stuff, what you got going on, you know? The, th the, thing. the thing. The thing that we're going to talk about later, Jesus. Bye, Jesus. All right, thank you so much for watching us on the Divided State of America on the Midas Media Network. Hit that subscribe button. We're going to be right back here next week with a brand new episode. Thanks.